at the three of the festivals. All festivals are on the same same time in October, which is great, but uh, we've managed to stagger them out across October so we don't clash, which is also fantastic as well. I'm just going to share some screen with you now and talk through. It worked earlier, so fingers crossed this will still work. So, um, our Northern Eye Festival is based in the oldest theatre in Wales. It's a bit of a historic sort of uh, element to it. It's a uh, very friendly sort of uh, come and turn up and listen to what, we, what the speakers are saying. So it's a, it's a core weekend based around a speakers um, sort of weekend. Which this year is the 9th and 10th of October. But based around that, there's also a free element. We pop up in the town in empty spaces and quite random places. Uh, which um, which hopefully engages people that um, might not have enough money to come to the, to the speaker side or or people that might not realise that they like the festival or like photography or become engaged in the gallery or, or feel maybe maybe a little bit sort of um, uneasy walking into festival spaces sometimes. So they, it works really well. Uh, I suppose it's kind of been, uh, been highlighted a little bit, a bit with the COVID goings on where everybody's outside at the moment. So I think it's... Uh, we were there many years before COVID made everybody else go outside, which is quite nice. So, so uh, I'm just going to try and pick up a few notes. So I do apologise for not being 100% um, ready for this today. So we pop up empty, empty places. So our speakers this weekend, this um, festival is going to go through um, 9th and 10th of October. So one of our main speakers this year is Charlie Phillips. He's had a lot of recent press recently. Um, about being an unsung hero of urban photography. So he's, I think he's about 78 at the moment and based in London. And um, I'm really, really pleased that we've managed to persuade Charlie to come and speak this year. It's, uh, it's going to be a wonderful sort of uh, open open conversation with Charlie. Uh, he's, um, he arrived over with the Windrush generation. His parents were invited over, um, not because uh, they, they were sort of... Uh, uh, they were invited, they were, not because they were poor, they were invited to come over and do some work in Britain. And uh, Charlie was a was a young, young youngster, sort of uh, making his way around London and this this new country to him. And he's he always kind of uh, wanted to be, um, I suppose, an opera singer or a shipbuilder. I think was kind of his uh, his dream. But he was always told in school that that um, he, he would never be that. So get yourself a, a real job, like a like on the buses in London or or in the Royal Navy or something that we, you'll be able to work at. Uh, photography kind of fell into his lap because um, some of the American servicemen that were coming over for the war, uh, they, they, one of them left a, an old Kodak Brownie with his father as sort of um, collateral, as pawned it. It was a taxi fare to get home and he never came back to pick it up. So Charlie picked up the camera and off he went, self-taught. So he, he put loads of manuals out from the library tried to learn photography himself and uh, became quite prolific at documenting sort of social history and what's happening around London and uh, sort, sort of a local community and an immigrant's life, African Caribbean funerals. So everything that was really important to him wasn't being documented. He became um, sort of quite a follower of student protests at the time and the protests at the time. And that took him across the world and he ended up going to France and Spain and up in Rome and became quite... Um, quite pally with some of the, the sort of film producers of the Spaghetti Westerns in Rome and Milan and uh, sort of became, I suppose, one of the first paparazzi sort of people around at uh, that time, photographing all the film stars. And he managed to um, kind of document things like Muhammad Ali and uh, he's quite, quite a bohemian lifestyle where he liked to go to festivals and enjoy himself and, and photograph all, all things that are happening there. So there's a whole documentary sort of um, back, background to that. And then he came back to sort of the UK and tried to move his photographs around, trying to get some work in the UK. And it was basically told because, um, because he was black that uh, he couldn't have taken these photographs. You must have found them in a bin and they're not yours. So um, there's a whole sort of social uh, sort of element there, which is going to be really, really interesting to explore and, and the way that he's overcome that. We have seven speakers on this year, so which is uh, quite nice. It's gonna... So these are some of some of Charlie's photographs. So it's um, it's the black and white uh, race race side of, of London, and his most famous one is the top left hand corner, I suppose, which is the young black couple, black and white couple. Um, 
the slides here. There's a, there's images in for a moment. So fantastic to have Charlie then. That's really brilliant. Emma's our, one of our second, another speaker, second speaker. Emma's case is from Liverpool. Uh, she runs a project called the Red Project, which documents Liverpool Football Club supporters' photographs, and she kind of collates those. She's a photographer in her own right, and she does uh, community projects and is a uh, artist in residence and present at the Open Eye Gallery in Liverpool. So I'm really looking forward to the to seeing how Emma uh, explains how she works with the communities and how she pulls together other people's photographs to time with her own as well. So there's a few of us, a few images. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the images of these photographers because uh, I don't want to spoil their, their talk, and I just want them to uh, to be able to tell them their own stories and not me. Brian Griffin, um, uh, top renowned photographer. Uh, everybody's probably heard of him. Uh, usual uh, 80s, 90s uh, pop covers. Uh, usually, Depeche Mode is probably his most famous one. Uh, uh, Speak and Spell. Uh, my era, I'm afraid I'm not that old, yes. And um, things like Kate Bush and all the top album covers. He's the, um, he's quite heavily involved in Format Festival in, in Derby and presently he has an exhibition there called Black Country Dada uh, Part 2. And we're, we're quite lucky that that exhibition is going to come down as part of the festival as well. So that'll be shown in, in the Oriel Colwyn. Um, gallery part, broadly speaking, a bit like we did uh, with Dan Wood's uh, exhibition on the 2019 and Amanda's, uh, Amanda Jackson exhibition when she was speaking in 2017, the, the main uh, uh, exhibition was upstairs in the gallery. So I see there's a few sort of uh, capitalist realism photography and very renowned for what he's doing there. And it's Tom Tomlinson, uh, her, her uh, I suppose the uh, most famous piece of work at the moment, present one is, let's go down, is it's the X-Photo, it's X-Photo work, which um, follows those Christian people, gives us insights around uh, France and Ireland and Poland and uh, encompasses sort of portraiture and, and large portland landscapes and X-Photo objects and the markers are left behind by those. I just recently uh, noticed uh, that, that uh, there was a page on the, Guardian with the top left image in, which is her exhibition at Side Gallery at the moment. So that's one of our joint uh, group exhibitions she's in. Jack Lowe, he's a documentarist. He uh, works, works around documenting all the lifeboat stations across um, the whole of the UK. And that's his sort of eight year work. He's in, on year five of doing it at the moment. And he takes around the old, the old format camera with the wet plate Lodeon. And he photographs the, the crew, the lifeboats, and also the view from the lifeboat stations. Huge, huge task. And uh, I think he's uh, taken this on sort of a, as a, as a life, lifetime's work as he's doing this thing, is stopping every single thing. Susie Lark is a conceptual photographer, uh, exploring a little bit things about um, emotional. Uh, so emotional well-being and mental health issues. Presently, I think, uh, I'm not too sure if it's still on, but it was at uh, Photo Gallery. Uh, David will probably confirm whether it's still at Photo Gallery and when we come to David, but her uh, work, her work um, unseen that is uh, at Photo Gallery or has been. And it's interesting work, it's conceptual, it's a bit of a bit of Photoshop, moving in together and moving images around together, trying to explain about mental health issues and about how she feels and how people feel. Craig Easton, another uh, Scottish person, but uh, Liverpool based now, um, just recently is just um, hugely successful in Sony World Photography of the Year this year with his, uh, his bang top work, which is brilliant. Uh, we, we came across Craig, I've known Craig quite a time, but uh, Craig was uh, the founder of the 16 Project at the last festival we had here, which is all the, um, the 16 year olds views and hopes of, and political, uh, what's happening in the world and where we're going. So he's also got Fisherwoman Project, which is, uh, again, quite a large scale project that's currently showing in Great Yarmouth at the Time and Time Museum. And he's um, it's an ongoing project with Thatcher's Children, which is a sort of historic one where he follows the children through the Thatcher years up to where they are now. Just skipping over these very quickly because uh, 
I'm quite aware of time scales. So uh, the Fringe Festival, at the moment, it's quite hard to, to organise things around COVID restrictions and what shops might be available and what areas might be available and what premises might be available. So a lot of it's going to be hopefully outside or on outside windows or, or viewable from passers-by without going into small spaces at the moment. Uh, fingers crossed uh, August the 7th for Wales is um, going to help, help that a little bit more as well. So Lottie Davis is going to present her queen work across the town in various pop-up places. Um, it's not going to be housed in a singular um, area. It's going to be a trail around town to go and find all the multimedia excerpts. Jack with his uh, live post station project is doing the live paste ups on two areas of, of the town. So big, big walls where we're pasting up some lifeboats relevant to where we are in North Wales. So it's probably going to be a Conway one or an Ancy one or a real one. We haven't quite decided on the images yet, but, uh, but these are sort of, it's like a huge jigsaw puzzle that's pasted together and it's uh, attached to walls with weak paste and over time will decay as the elements get to it. So, but the, the uh, sort of, um, the act of putting it up will be part of the festival as well, so we can come and watch. And you can even sponsor one, one piece of the jigsaw puzzle if you're so well inclined to sponsor one piece. Brian Griffin, we've spoken about his um, Black Country Dada coming down. And I'm talking to David about um, bringing some, some of the Many Voices One Nation exhibition up to North Wales. There's, um, it's a great exhibition and it's a great sort of two-part exhibition at the moment, uh, which has been held in Cardiff. And it's, it's quite nice because um, the photographer, some photographers based in North Wales and Mid Wales and South Wales, and I think it's a uh, vital opportunity to, to show the work in the North as well. So I'm not sure how that's going to fit in or where it's going to fit in the moment, but it's something that I'm really keen and eager to do and um, be part of the festival. So, so one of Brian Griffin's um, in, uh, shots here, but it's just kind of a, it's, it's my sort of plea to you guys listening, I suppose, uh, if there's some work that you're doing and I'm not aware of, and you would like to introduce it to me, please, can you just email me something on, on the email on, on the screen here? And I'd love to see it, first of all, and if there's an opportunity that we can incorporate into the festival. The festival doesn't have a theme, uh, per se. I don't particularly go along themes for festivals. It's, it's quite a, a mix and match. So don't worry that you might think that what you're going to show me doesn't fit in with what's already there. I'm, I'm eager and keen to see if anybody has got some work that they would like to show me first of all and become part of the festival. And I'll just leave that there for a, a, a second, just so you can snap with your phones or, or screenshot the, the email address. Okay, and this is a really rushed offer. Um, there, is, there is a cost to the R Festival Speakers Weekend. And um, there unfortunately has to be a cost because we need to pay for speakers, we need to pay, pay for are in the hall, the, the, uh, the venue, the staffing costs and those issues are there. So we have brought the price down this, this, this year in sort of recognition of everybody's having a really crap year and it's been really hard for everybody. So this is kind of um, the weekend pass, £40 will allow you to, to, be, to come physically to the theatre and experience the whole weekend of the 8th and 9th. So, but on top of that, for today's session, there's a 20% discount that will run out at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. So you've only got one, one, one and a bit days to take uh, an opportunity to knock eight pound off that 40 pound. Now, Brian and Emma didn't know about that, so there's my present to you. <laughs> but uh, um, I, would, I would also put as well, it is hard for us to run a festival here. We don't really get much funding. So, um, as much as I would like to make things a lot cheaper, there's, there's not really an option for that at the moment. Uh, we get a little bit of funding from the town council because they see it as a, as a sort of a, a tourist event or, or a regeneration event, I suppose, for the town, because uh, our town needs a bit of regeneration, so, so that helps there. It doesn't cover everything, you know, so the ticket sales help cover everything else. So it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of not a sales pitch, but it's an explanation why there's a cost to the speaker's element there. And that's, uh, that's me, I think. Are we doing questions now, Brian, or are we doing questions later? Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, we'll do the questions at the end, yeah, as a group. Right, Glenn, next, I think. And I've got your slides, haven't I? Right. 
just bring those up. Yeah. Uh, first of all, good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming along. Um, I think the first thing that we should say is that I think just the thought of us putting on three festivals um, shows the strength of photography in Wales, uh, which is ever growing. Um, so I think, first of all, I'll give you a bit of a background to the Eye Festival, which the first was in 2012. Uh, making this the fifth festival and the promise at the beginning really was to bring the world's best photographers to Wales uh, giving the weekend full of you know full of activity and learning and and from the great Italian photojournalists Marco Longari and Daniel Balducci to the beautiful landscapes of Charlie Waite to the ever supporting David Hearn we have tried to give you quality and variety at every festival I think, I think we've done that. Um, just a few of the names um, that have come to the festival, uh, Ian Berry, Angela Tunda Samba, David, of course, um, Laura Panak, Nick Danzinger, Jill Fermanowski, rock musician, uh, rock uh, photographer, Rodri Jones from North Wales, uh, Maria Grisdeva, Rebecca Need, and Arthur Edwards. Such an eclectic mix of photographers, um, but all really at the top of their game, um, whichever genre of photography that they're, they're taking. Um, as I say, we, I think we've done this over the past five. The reason that we're, well, all of a sudden we're in the odd year, uh, because as uh, Paul said, normally we're the even year and Colwyn Bay is the odd year, is the fact that COVID has taken two years away from us. And if we hadn't put on something, that would have been three years without an eye festival. So we just felt that we had to do something this year just to keep uh, or to regain a little bit of momentum. Um, the eye festival will be on the 16th and 17th of October with three speakers on each of the Saturday and Sunday. And just to give everybody the opportunity to see the talks and of course with the situation people are still worried about traveling still worried about being in arenas or crowded places that we are going to do this year's festival as a hybrid and thanks to Pete Telfer and Culture Colony I always call it Culture Club and he kills me every time I say it but Pete Telfer and Culture Colony we're, we're going to live stream the festival so you can still attend, though numbers will be limited. So it will, that will be on a first come, first serve. But if you can't make it to Aberystwyth, then you can buy a ticket and, and watch it at home, um, which is something that we haven't done before. Uh, but I think it's, it, it's going to be great for people that maybe are further away, and also it might make it into a worldwide uh, festival. Uh, the weekend will be compared by the head of images at the Independent, who again has been a great supporter of the festival, Sophie Batterbury. And just to give you a brief outline of some of the um, or of the speakers that we've got, um, Mary Mary Turner, who is a, a member of Panos Pictures, she began a career as a press photographer, and then became committed to telling the stories behind the news, which led to a project called the Dale Farm Community, which she still works on today. Um, her work has been recognized worldwide by bodies, including Philip Jones Griffiths Award, Amnesty International, Sony Award, UK Picture Editors Guild, just to name but a few. Um, and I, her work has been used all over the world in every publication, you can, too much, just too many to mention. Uh, Van Lee, Van Lee has often been described as the godfather of black British photography and um, his body of work represents possibly the largest photographic record of the Caribbean diaspora in Britain and his simple motivation has been to the preservation of culture and the history through his photography and um, he's been taking pictures in the Midlands you know from from the 60s right the way through to now. And it's such a record of his particular culture and way of life. Um, Nicola, if I can just find Nicola. 
Yeah, Nicola Muirhead. Uh, she's actually from Bermuda, specialises in long form projects. She's a member of the London Creative Network, women's photographer, and is part of Photo Scratch, which is a, a body show, showcasing work in progress from documentary photographers. Uh, she's a founding member of Isle, a photographic collective of women photographers. And she is just the nicest person to deal with. Very positive. And uh, I must say, all of these photographers, we this is the third date that we've actually had um, to put the festival on. And COVID has hit us on the previous two. And each and every one of these uh, photographers have been so supportive to the, to the festival and just said, you tell us when to turn up and we'll be there. And they've been absolutely wonderful. Um, David is probably best known for his society and celebrity photography uh, while he was working for Tatler magazine in the 80s and then he moved to New York and working for Vanity Fair, Talk and the New York Observer, came back to UK, was a regular contributor to Sunday Telegraph, The Times and The Independent and just some of the icons he's photographed, like Tony Curtis, Mick Jagger, Johnny Depp, DiCaprio, Cruz, Prince, the list goes on and on and on. And he's been in some in situations that, as photographers, sometimes we just dream of, in social parties, which are including all of these celebrities. And it's just a fantastic body of work. Uh, Laura. Laura is um, a British Egyptian documentary photographer living between East and West for the majority of her life. Uh, again, she started on newspapers in, in America and turned to freelance in 2005, moving to Cairo and producing what became her seminal body of work in the shadow of the pyramids. Laura is the first Egyptian to be awarded the W. Eugene Smith Memorial Fund Award and also received for her long-term series, I'll Die For You. In 2020, Laura joined Canon's Global Ambassador Program, um, a global roster of more than 100 visual professionals representing the future of um, visual storytelling. And finally, we have Lali Snow. Unfortunately, I haven't got any pictures of her work at the moment, but um, Lali was, uh, is a more um, photojournalist covering conflict, Middle East and Afghanistan, actually living in Kabul for over five years. Uh, she came to my attention when I saw a book published in 2008 called War Gardens, where she explored conflict through the peaceful act of gardening, which seems quite a, a contradiction there, but the, the images are actually absolutely stunning. Uh, so that, they're the six uh, photographers that are coming to talk. At the moment, ex exhibitions are a bit sketchy. Um, because due to the COVID, all the exhibitions in Aberystwyth with Art Centre had to be moved into different dates. And um, the two main galleries, we can't have photography in them, but we still obviously want a big photography presence with the exhibitions. So we're looking at people, talking to people, talking at different venues. Um, so there will still be a good selection of exhibitions either in the centre itself although not in the gallery um, and in other spaces we can find. Um, we're talking to the library, but you know that, that, that's up in the air as well could because of COVID. Saturday night at the movies will be Joseph Kadelka um, shooting Holy Land. Uh, if you look at the trailer, you will want to see the film. Uh, Kadelka, for your journey in the region, is, it's just an epic film, it's absolutely wonderful. We'll still have our crit sessions, for those of you who are brave enough, places to book. Um, these will be live and online. Again, more details on that will be announced on the website in the next week or two. So, and also we have the ever popular cyanotype workshop. So again, we'll be busting a gut really to provide a weekend to remember, even with all the problems that the three of us have had in putting festivals on. As Paul said, there is a cost because um, we have people to pay, etc. And the cost is a straight £50 right the way through and 25 for students. 
So, and that will give access to the online festival. And if you turn up, it's the same price. So that's basically a background for what we're doing. Um, and I'm sure all three of us, again, these things don't happen unless people turn up and people support it. Um, it's difficult, I know, but we're all interested in photography. We all want these things to continue. So, you know, all I can ask is uh, those of you who can, um, please try and support all three if you can, but at least if you could come to one or two, that would be wonderful. Um, the iFestival website is on, on the bottom there. Um, that will be updated next week. So all the information that I'm talking about and more will be on the website from next week. So thank, thanks very much for listening. Jochen Wall, Glenn. Thank you very much, Glenn. Excellent. And we move on to Mr. David Drake. Oh, good evening, uh, everybody. And uh, thanks very much, um, uh, Glenn and Paul, for your presentations. Really useful. And you were absolutely on the 15 minutes. So I know that I can't <laughs> see that. Um, I'll just get up the screen share. So let me have a look. Um, up. Sorry, it's a bit of a delay here. Can you, can you all see that okay? Yeah. yeah. That's good, yeah. Um, Diffusion 21 will be the fifth biennial edition of Diffusion. Um, the first one it was in May 2013. Um, I mean, the, I suppose the sort of the, the basic concept of Diffusion is to really take over as many venues and spaces as we can, um, principally in, in Cardiff, but we always have satellite projects in, in other places in Wales. And over a very, very kind of intensive period of a, a full calendar month to show, you know, a, a huge variety of different work um, from around the world, exciting work that's been made in Wales or emerging from Wales in terms of kind of um, fledgling talent. And all of that applies to our plans for Diffusion 2021. But, um, assuming I can actually, doesn't seem to want me to move on, so I don't know. Oops. So I'll just go back in with the share because it seems to be sticking. Okay. Hmm. Hang up. When you share, David, can you see controls on your Zoom window for moving on? No, I can't. Ah, right. Right, hang on a minute. I'll try, I'll try again. Hold on, if I could just get out and show. And that's what the problem is. So, um, I'll just go back. Okay, and then if I go to presenter mode, yes, I can now. Good, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, I think the, I mean, obviously, as has been alluded to by Glenn, I mean, it's been an incredibly difficult year in terms of, you know, not just planning and thinking about what we can or can't do financially, or in terms of the kind of scale of the the festival that we're able to kind of mount, but also we've had to kind of. Um, you know, be in dialogue with the Welsh government about their thoughts about what is likely to be able to to happen in October 2021. And to be honest, it's been quite difficult because I mean, the Welsh government, um, you know, have uh, had assumed that any festival happening in 2021 would be a virtual festival. Um, and then we sort of talked to them about the idea of um, public realm outside spaces, that kind of thing. And they kind of warmed to that idea. But until recently, indoor exhibitions were a complete no-no. Um, and we still aren't out the woods in terms of, um, you know, if there is an upsurge in, in the autumn, etc. Uh, sort of clarity on, on, on whether we are able to hold 
indoor exhibitions, what limits there are on capacity, what social distancing measures, et cetera. So, you know, there's all of that is the kind of backdrop which has made life difficult. But I do think it is, and this is why I've chosen the theme Turning Point, it is an opportunity to change things. And the very fact that the three festivals are happening in the same month is itself a really exciting kind of opportunity in terms of positioning photography in Wales very strongly, not just in Wales, but in internationally. And I mean, what we always try to do with Diffusion is provide a, a platform for new artistic voices. And it is very much a collaborative enterprise. It's not all curated by me. It's, you know, we, we take on board um, other people's ideas and partnerships. Um, and, but what we try and do is we, we try and champion work that is accessible, that kind of speaks to people across, you know, geographies, neighborhoods, city, region, national, et cetera. And also we celebrate the diversity of Wales and its relationships with the world. I mean, I think the reality of Diffusion 2021 is that, you know, it has to be a blended virtual and physical event. So we have to put as much energy and resource into thinking how the, the virtual festival is gonna look and feel from an audience point of view, as we're putting into thinking about how we use the, you know, the fabric of the cities that we work in as a kind of space for presenting work. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm sort of pretty confident that our international engagement will be predominantly virtual. Um, there are some international artists who we hope will come um, and be there for their exhibitions and things like that. But we have to sort of think about um, ways in which they can be sort of actively contributing to the festival and also our audience being a global audience rather than just being a kind of local audience. So we're kind of working through some of those kind of issues. I mean, we did notice that Format Festival went completely for the virtual model. And I think in some ways, you know, although laudable and probably inevitable in the circumstances, it didn't feel like a Format Festival to me. It was lacking that kind of level of engagement that I've come to expect. In terms of the outside spaces where the, some of the social distancing kind of issues are less um, of a problem, I think we're interested in, and particularly in October, in projections, in how we can use billboards and physical structures in a kind of creative way. There's some examples here. Um, we've got some pretty interesting, on the right is our um, space, our new space in, in Fanny Street and Cate's, but there's some pretty interesting kind of other sort of indoor environments where we can do some pretty amazing things. And also I'm quite interested in these spaces in between. Um, you know, we might not be inviting people into um, empty arcade shop, shops and stores, etc. but we can do things in the window. We can find abandoned corners of the city and kind of bring them back to life. So that's very much part of our, our thinking. And, you know, linking that, obviously ways that people can contribute creatively using the mobile technologies or online tools, as well as kind of interacting with the festival in real time. I think the other thing which is really important to us, it's always important, but it seems particularly important now is that, you know, partic participation has to be kind of long-term, meaningful and real. So we're working with um, RNIB Gumri um, in a project which is about photography for the visually impaired. And it's part of a national initiative and there will be a kind of Welsh exhibition of the work that comes out of this project. Where's My Space is a partnership between Photo Gallery and Power 254, which is a Kenyan kind of youth activism kind of organization. And the whole project from sort of early conception to realization will play out through a digital collaboration. I think the, um, in terms of the, the program, I'm not gonna go through every artist because there's too many, <laughs> um, but there are some kind of quite important projects for us. So. John Crera, who I'm sure some of you know him, is a Newport-based kind of photographer and artist. Um, he's been looking at the Festival of Britain, and it, it was, 2021 is the, 20, uh, the 70th anniversary of the Festival of Britain. And in particular, he's looking at the way that the Festival of Britain played out in Wales. And there's a lot of interesting kind of stories in relation to that. So the film, What Comes Next, which uses archival footage from the National Library of Wales, um, has kind of Festival of Britain kind of parties in Merthyr and other places. Um, he's also looking at the, um, the Gare Estate in Newport, which won a Festival of Britain 
architecture award and it's still kind of an interesting um place it both in terms of its modernist kind of architecture but also in terms of it being in transition um so the focus will be on that particular turning point post-war when the festival of britain um took place but its contemporary resonances are quite strong so that will be something that will come through I'm working with Paul Sung, who um, runs the Invisible Britain project um, on the second of his sort of three part series called The Separated Isle. Um, and uh, there's a book coming out at the end of September and we're gonna do the first actual physical show of the work. Um, and you will see from, this is just a small selection of the photographers contributing. I think some of them are actually on this kind of Zoom session that it does, uh, that Wales uh, features quite strongly in the work along with sort of Scotland and England, Northern Ireland, etc. Um, Paul brought up the Many Voices One Nation and we're sort of now out on our third <laughs> uh, round of this and um, it started with the partnership with the, um, the Welsh Parliament, the, the Senate, um, where there were the six commissions and, and the work toured to um, Merthyr and Aberystwyth and was due to go to Carnarvon but then Covid struck. And then the second edition were these um, 12 commissions based on recommendations from photography activists around Wales. And I'm looking at a kind of a new selection, which is projects that didn't necessarily get identified through those first two phases, but I think are really interesting bodies of work being produced in Wales. Um, not necessarily always Wales being the subject, but um, and looking at quite... Uh, tough subjects. I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with Nick Rush's work, but it's, you know, it's about a drug and alcohol abusing kind of community in Swansea, but it's also quite a sort of sensitive and, and very evocative portrayal of their lives. Um, with Sebastian Bruno, um, I mean, I should say that this year Newport's going to feature quite significantly. Um, we're actually planning to do three sort of major exhibitions in Newport and a number of kind of community projects. And Sebastian is working with this particular group of uh, former Newport documentary photography um, students, who've, many of whom have gone on to, to great success. Um, so they, they were there, I think, between 2010 to 2013. And... Um, you know, they're going to show work that previously hasn't been shown from that period. They're also going to make work and have a kind of printer and they're going to collaborate with people on the street. So it would be a kind of ever changing exhibition in a kind of space in the city centre. And I, I sort of recently spent a good day with Ron McCormick and others. Um, and I think one of the exhibitions, which I'm calling Many Voices, One City, <laughs> will actually look back at probably 40 years of photography in Newport, including Ron's work <coughs> himself, and <coughs> provide a very kind of textured and, and um, I, I hope engaging kind of representation of the city and its people. So that's just a little bit of the flavor of, of that. Um, imagining the nation state are actually five commissions. There's two Welsh uh, photographers, Hugh Davis and uh, Sebastian Bustamante, and three Indian photographers. And it's come out of our collaboration with Chennai Photo Biennale. And More Than a Number is an initiative by Cynthia Sitte, who's a Wales-based photographer, but also our creative producer. So this will feature 12 um, African photographers whose work is kind of very highly regarded in Africa, but hasn't had much exposure in Europe and being brought um, together in a single exhibition at Photo Gallery. And I'm also <clears throat> keen, and this is obviously partly dependent on budgets, to bring the work of Tim Georgeson, who's an indigenous sort of um, Australian kind of photographer and filmmaker. And this body of work was in response to the bushfires that swept across Australia and in the particular kind of tribe that he comes from and worked with actually have kind of customs around how they manage fire as a kind of a resource and positively and avoid the kind of environmental catastrophe they're having in Australia. And um, Land Sea, which actually was, I think, showing in um, 
Aberystwyth at the time of the last um, uh, eye festival um, is actually going to be at um, what well, is already there. It's at Orrilly Park in St David's from this month through until January 2022. So there's some, there's a new film that I've kind of um, made about the project and there's some new work being added and we want to have a kind of blended virtual and physical event just before um, the Climate Change Conference in Scotland at the beginning of November. Okay, I'm going to sort of whip through some of the other things. Um, I mean, I think it's important that, you know, particularly coming out of this last year, that there will be a kind of well-being um, and resilience kind of feel, particularly in relation to some of our public realm work. <clears throat> I think people need to feel that there's a positive future. <laughs> um, this is Paul John Roberts' um, portraits of the Cardiff market traders, which we think will make a really good kind of public realm presentation. Um, Hilary Powell has um, been doing a residency at the Trostray Steelworks in Llanethi, and it's the 70th anniversary of the steel of the tin works this year. So we're hoping that the exhibition will actually happen in the in the plant. Um, and Ali Crew, who's a Manchester based kind of photographer, has done these portraits of trans individuals. Um, and one of the rights, she won the Portrait of Britain 2018, 2019 for that image. So we're bringing this to Cardiff uh, as part of our collaboration with Iris Film Festival. Um, I just wanted to say that I am always keen to work with collectives and if there are collectives in Wales or even outside Wales that put forward a proposition and can take some sort of ownership of its realisation, you know, we're, I'm very keen for that to happen kind of during this year's festival. I think we have to kind of combine our resources and be quite smart in terms of the way we deliver things. Um, and just finally, um, I believe there's a Bristol Photo Book Festival <laughs> happening in October. So we don't actually want to go head to head with that. But actually, <clears throat> we thought we might do an event or a series of events um, that look at self-publishing and more of the zine approach. I know with Offline, that you sort of, um, and Photon, you've covered this, because it is a way that photographers can get their work out there and in print. And, and some of them are very good, the, the sort of zine type kind of photo books. And I think a bit of discussion really about that as a form and that's me really, I think. So any questions, please feel free to ask. Actually, it's Paul Cabot's. I do beg your pardon, Paul. Is he unmuted? I'm, I've unmuted myself. Hopefully you hear me. Um, uh, firstly, I'd like to thank, obviously, uh, Photon for kind of dragging people together, which is great. Um, and uh, thank uh, Glenn, Paul, and David for for talking about the festivals, and, and uh, as somebody who's had a uh, more than a passing interest in photography in Wales for, for thirty years, uh, I think it's absolutely brilliant uh, uh, that there are these three very different festivals taking place, and it's uh, it's a wonderful opportunity that, that, that there is a diversity uh, in all sorts of ways, including geographically. Um, and uh, congratulations to you all for, for, for putting this together. And I think, uh, as you've all alluded to, uh, it's a really important time for people to get away from the pandemic and to sort of feel that we, we are part of a, a culture and a society that does good things. Uh, and so, uh, so thank you very much. And I, I really look forward to engaging with every one of you. So there's no question uh, other than where do I pay, I suppose. There you go. Thank you. Send it to me, Paul. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Can I, can I just add something very quickly, uh, Glenn reminded me of, and, and David actually, there, there is a, a virtual side to our festival as well. So if you can't physically make it to, um, North Wales, there is an option to um, get a ticket to watch online for the weekend. You know, we, hopefully, we'd rather people turn up and and show themselves yeah, sort of in person if that's possible. 
but but uh, the allowing of it being virtually, as as Glenn and David both said, it opens it up internationally as well. So maybe as for people that couldn't travel uh, anyhow because of travel restrictions, or or just it wasn't possible for them to come across from other parts of the, of the world just for a trip out to come and see a couple of festivals. So there's an option to kind of tune in to all of our festivals, I think, now, isn't there, virtually, which is great, really good. Will that be the Speaker Talks and yeah, any the, of the shows that you're, you're showing? Will the shows be online, the exhibition? Uh, de definitely the Speaker Talks at the moment. Um, I'm thinking about um, halfway through the festival, maybe virtualising some of the exhibitions as well, but um, I'd rather people come and see them if possible first before I start throwing everything online. Mm. But um, but I think 100% um, the, the speakers, virtual speakers weekend is available to buy now. It's the same price as a normal, normal for a festival, but just a case of, uh, um, uh, I don't think the, the discount code I gave for the turning up in person works on the virtual one at the moment, but um, if it doesn't, then let me know and I'll come and sort that one out because somebody's interested in a, in a cheaper virtual one. Not that I'm trying to give away all my funding to try and do things uh, by making things cheaper, but thank you. Yeah, I think our plan is to is to actually put the festival as a whole, uh, even down to the crits, if people are brave enough to send some work in, uh, we can show the the photographers that are coming to give a to give advice or to give a, some praise or whatever. Um, so even down to the crits, we're hoping that will that will happen. And can you just confirm, Glenn? Those crits and portfolio reviews, those are free. <clears throat> those are all included in the price. Yeah, right. you know, if you if you come to the festival, then that's included. Okay. Any more? got to be one or two questions surely maybe not paul yeah if if again if i can sorry just just ask uh the this question about accessibility really and it's it's a you know it's an ever-changing to the situation that we're moving in to again um but clearly with the eye festival in, in Aberystwyth, uh, Glenn, I can remember that, um, you know, there was accommodation opportunities sort of being sort of advertised actually by the festival. And, uh, and again, you know, David, you know, with Cardiff being uh, the, the, the city of hotels, I mean, there was never really a problem uh, with the, with people coming in. So, I mean, I'm just wondering about advice. I mean, obviously it's got to change, but, uh, how how are you sort of pitching uh, to a wider public the, the your festivals uh, each of you and uh, you know Paul I know you you're, you're in a in an area which is uh, should have a lot of hotels uh, up, up there mm -hmm. in Colwyn Bay but but you know how are you managing your your comms in terms of advice as we unfold as the roadmap develops towards the uh, the actual festivals themselves. I, mean, I think that's a really that that if you if you don't mind me responding, I mean I think that's a really pertinent question because it's been quite difficult because we've been looking to see what Mark Drakeford <laughs> says next. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean clearly what Mark Drakeford is saying is, a, you know, have a holiday in the UK, in Wales in particular. Um, so whereas previously the Welsh government was saying, how many Germans can you get to come to Cardiff for diffusion and things like that. It could equally be how many North Walians are going to come to Cardiff for diffusion and vice versa in terms of um, um, coming up to Colwyn Bay for the Northern Eye, etc. And similarly, we're going to focus on the UK market. Um, we have done that before in October and we had kind of buses from Birmingham and London and I mean, mainly students um, that sort of came down and they would make, you know, they arrange an overnight stay and they sort of make a weekend of it. And, but I think there's less of this sort of um, demonstrating that somebody's flown in and spent two bed nights in a kind of luxury hotel and, you know, et cetera. And I think it's got to be about, um, you know, what what's going to be possible in terms of physical reach, in terms of audiences, as opposed to kind of coming up with kind of crazy numbers that are difficult to evidence. And, you know, I suppose the other side of that is that the online engagement also has to be measured <laughs> in terms of Welsh government. So, 
you know, they are interested in you know, the duration of the visits that people make through the online. I mean, we're, you know, I have mixed feelings. I don't want to talk about it here about pricing and online talks and events and things like that. And I think it's difficult to, you know, there's the pay what you want model. There's the kind of you know, pay eight quid <laughs> for event run a model and, and none of them are sort of satisfactory. Um, so I think we've got to kind of be responsive to the evolving situation or the unfolding situation, the roadmap, whatever. And we might have to pivot. We might have to sort of put much more resource into the online if the physical is going to get in difficult. But equally, it could go the other way. There could be, you know, travel routes opened up, get more international. So we sort of, a lot of it needs to be kind of positive and all the reasons that you would want to come to Cardiff or Newport and and we're scheduling things so there's a Newport Focal Weekend in the last week of October and there's a Cardiff Focal Weekend in the first week of October so that, so that we're not sort of um, going head to head with with you guys in, in Aberystwyth and uh, um, Colwyn Bay. Mm. So that's a I bit of a convoluted answer, but I, I think that we we have to kind of plan for different scenarios, mm. but it does seem that the UK market if that's the right way of putting it, is an important one to have a really clear strategy on. I think there's an opportunity as well of each festival helping the others. I mean, not, not in the sense of organisation or anything like that, but certainly in the marketing. Um, the three festivals are on it. They're on in different times. And I think... We've got different audiences in different areas, so I don't see the uh, there should there should be no issue really that the three of us work together on the marketing of yeah. of the photography month, and let people let each other's audience know what's going on in Colwyn Bay and, and Cardiff as well. Okay, it's a nice comment from sorry. Nice comment from Ellie. Yes, we we are resilient <laughs> despite the emptiness of our financial pockets. And 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 it's. I mean, I think we should fess up that we did try and make a pitch for the three festivals to the arts council, but we didn't get very far with it. So we've had to kind of, um, you know, change our strategy in terms of how we can pull it off. But we are determined and resilient, each of us. Yeah, I think the fact that um, all, all elements of, the, of our festivals are on different times. So, David, um, if you're on the first week in October, uh, North Lights, second week, uh, the Eyes, the third week. And I think, David, you've got something on the last We've week the, as well, the, have you? The Newport parties. Yeah. Uh, in, in... So, I think there, there's an opportunity to have a, a travelling troupe going around Wales. So, I mean, as long as we're allowed to do that, as long as uh, Mr. Drake has let us do that. But it's, uh, it's a great opportunity, isn't it? Mm. It might be tough on the liver, though, uh, Paul. Possibly. Mm. Philip, not for, not for us teetotalers. <laughs> Philip. Hi there, no, um, first of all, great work to all three of you. Um, a couple of you I, I know from uh, meeting you at the, at the Northern Eye, but uh, they all look like fan uh, fantastic festivals. I was just wondering in general, um, I mean, you mentioned that you um, I didn't manage to get the Arts Council funding, David, but I was just wondering in terms of the strength of um, these sorts of things in Wales, um, particularly after the pandemic, um, how much of an effect that's had on, on running the galleries, the festivals and things in terms of funding for photography at, at large? Yeah, I mean, well, from my point of view, you know, I am very grateful for the cultural recovery funding that we received that kept us going and was able, you know, and that did support the Many Voices One Nation project, the publication, and enabled us to follow through on our commitments to our European partners with, with that project. Um, so I think that was that was great because if we were just fighting for our survival and not commissioning new work, then I don't think we would be in the position we are in now. But the harsh reality of it is that the Welsh Government Major Events Unit couldn't make any decisions on any events that they that they were able to support and the Arts Council closed all of their lottery funds for the best part of a year. So whereas previously we might have at least an intimation eight months before the festival that they was support or not support, we've been kind of hanging on in there trying to make 
plans but not make commitments for, for quite a long time and, and October's not that far away so it's it's a tricky thing because things do cost money and and we do try and make as much as possible available for free but I do respect the fact that you know the eye festivals have, have by necessity had to charge um, to meet their costs and so so I, I think you know we are where we are I think as I said the pandemic has brought out the best and the worst in society in general um, but I think that the photography community has brought out the best because I think we are collaborating and we are upbeat and we are strong and, and there's more work being made in Wales as far as I can see than, than pretty much every other UK region and it's work of quality. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, it's good to hear that as well. And um, I mean, I'm a, I was going to say one positive is that things like this are happening online. And um, you know, I sort of live up in Llangollen, so it's it's not an easy drop down to, to Cardiff. I did come down to catch the end of the, the One Nation exhibition a yeah. few weeks ago. But um, the fact that these are going online now is, um, I think, is great for the community as well, in that you can engage with other people and you're not just sitting in your little silo in the in the middle of nowhere. You know. So, mm. I mean, answer to your question, I mean, it really hasn't changed for the Eye Festival because we've never had funding. Right. Uh, we're in exactly the same situation. My only worry is because of the situation that we don't get people to um, to attend. You know, I'm confident that we will, but there obviously is a worry because of COVID, etc. cetera. Um, but as far as funding is concerned, we've never had any. So that's why we have to charge because we want to bring good people to show people in Wales, and um, that costs. Mm. I'll be booking my ticket right after this talk. So. Oh, you sweet talker. <laughs> right, uh, David yeah. Pritchard, if you could unmute, David, your mic, please. You did have your hand raised. David? Okay. Uh, there's another question come in here from Ellie. Uh, will the online elements be recorded, archived? It would be nice to have a record of how this has all unfolded. The answer to that is yes, it will be, but we've had problems before with copyright with the photographers because a photographer may come to the eye festival and give a talk and then he might go to Birmingham or he might go to Cardiff and he gives exactly the same talk. So we had a problem with um, Steele Perkins and because he allowed us in the end to record, to record it, but he was worried that it's gonna kill other talks around the country because he's given the same talk. That's an issue. I mean, can I can I come in with a, perhaps a slightly different point, really? Because I think ordinarily uh, we would have done, you know, 3D walkthroughs of our exhibitions. We would have recorded interviews with artists and symposium proceedings would be, you know, either audio recorded or transcribed and things like that. But I'm now thinking that actually that might not be the best thing to do not for the copyright reasons, but actually because it, it becomes a bit boring and repetitive. You know, the 3D tours kind of look the same, <laughs> et cetera. So we're, we're kind of project by project thinking, well, how are we going to kind of present this online? So we might do some more you know, sort of high, higher production value kind of videos that we make in advance of the event rather than catching an interview on the, on the fly, so to speak. Um, you know, we might take a different approach to our 3D tours and have some richer content in them, um, embedded into those tours. We might decide that we don't need to do a 3D tour of every exhibition. <laughs> you know, we just might pick the ones which are best suited for that. So I, I think this is partly about the experience for people who are logging on online, and whether it's a live streamed event or a recorded event. And it's also to do with legacy. Because just having a website with lots of stuff on it isn't the great legacy. Whereas if you've got something that captures the quality of the work and the diversity of the work and the process, then that's, I think, a stronger legacy. So we're learning. You know, I think we're learning. We, we've been learning for every festival we do. 
Um, okay, does anyone have any thoughts on a festival format that perhaps they've thought worked in a peculiar or an interesting sort of way, you know, a particular show or speaker talks? I agree. I watched some of the format festival. Um, in fact, it was the Brian Griffin presentation, David, um, mm -hmm. that you mentioned earlier. And I just thought it was disappearing up its own bum, to be honest, because they use the website as the format for going around Brian's slides. Mm -hmm. And it was so clunky mm -hmm. having to wait for the interviewer to actually navigate to the virtual wall where the photograph was when a PowerPoint <laughs> would have actually yeah. <laughs> served the purpose far, yeah. far better. Um, but but I, I did the portfolio reviews for Format and I think they were great. We did those online and they, they were excellent, you know. So, so I think some things it's well suited to, but actually you can't replicate the experience of being in a physical space, walking around an exhibition and having conversations. With, you know, it's, it just doesn't work. And even if you invest huge amounts of money in technology and you've got the best 3D designers on board, you're still not going to be able to kind of capture that. Mm. Were those portfolios shared with you in advance or were they a, a surprise? Yeah, they had a there? thing called PICTA, which you might be familiar with. So I think the, well, the people who were applying, because they paid, although they offered a lot of bursaries, so they uploaded their portfolios to a thing called PICTA. And then obviously I was given the links to the... So I was able to look at them in advance and during the kind of portfolio. So that was fine. And to be honest, it was a long day. <laughs> so, and I would have preferred to have had a sort of a comfort break or whatever. But, but, but it, you know, it was a good experience. And I'm working with some of those photographers now. Um, so it, it obviously worked for them as well. Okay, I think there aren't any other questions. Philip, your hand's still up. Am I going to bring it down for you? <laughs> Did you have another question? No, there you go. Right. Emir, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, well, um, I'd like to thank uh, the three directors of the various festivals. It's been very enlightening. I'm looking forward to visiting all three, really. We've, um, uh, I'm sort of the taste buds are sort of buzzing really, um, and I I know the Col Colwyn Bay was the last one I went to, and it was a great weekend. Will we have a curry there? Uh, uh, yeah, well, I'm I'm rebranding re it this year. It's it is uh, curry with the stars. Wow! Uh, it's in the same place, and we're all stars, so just curry with stars. <laughs> a night to remember. Great. A night to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Can I, um, can I say one thing, uh, Emmy? That yeah. Uh, there are about 24, 25 people here tonight. Mm. Please spread the news. You know, please tell yeah. people because it's amazing how many people still don't know about uh, any of the festivals. Um, so if you've got photography friends, if you're in co in collaborations, or, you know, whoever you're with, if you could spread the news and help us get more people to these festivals because I don't want to lose any of them and I know the others don't want to lose it. Uh, so if they can help in spreading the news, that would be wonderful. Yeah, and I think... Yeah, I even, think... Sorry, was that Emma? So, sorry, even things like just, just a retweet or uh, something on Facebook, if you see it, just just any help is really appreciated, it really is. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Photon will do its best to uh, promote uh, the festivals. So use us as a, a conduit to um, to tell us what you're about, etc. And we'll do our best to promote you. Thank you. Right, we, there are no, uh, no more. Shall, shall we draw to a close, Brian? I think so. If there are no more questions, then yeah, um, yeah. yeah cool. We'll uh, say thanks all. Thanks to the three speakers, and uh, thanks for everyone for joining tonight. Thanks, folks, on for getting it together. Thanks very much. No, no, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. See you later. Thanks, everybody. Thanks all. Bye. Bye.